Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and the original HyperX Cloud from Kingston really set the benchmark for a well-sounding and a well-priced gaming headset. Let's see if the addition of the HyperX Cloud Revolver is a good one at $120 or it will remain in the cloud heaven. Toshiba, now offering OCZ products that are awesome and affordable like the RD400, TR150 and VT180 that are backed by advanced warranty program, now stronger than ever under Toshiba. So the revolver looks like a gaming headset, more so than the earlier models. There's more plastic on the ear cups, the microphone is larger, looks like a boom mic, but the headband and the padding on the ear cups look very familiar. This self-adjusting headband is a safe choice with the new metal frame that is well designed for comfort with perfect clamping force. Plus it's thin enough to not add much weight, uh, but the support beam inside the padding itself is plastic. It doesn't really feel like it would take a fall. I would take care of this headset. Now, the good thing is it does not crack, it's pretty flexible, but the metal frame absorbs any sound that touches it, uh, which can be easily heard inside the ear cups. It's not really an issue if you're still, but quite annoying if you're putting the headset on, handling the microphone, or even moving your head. So unfortunately, I've never been this displeased with an otherwise comfortable frame that has such an annoying element. The large ear cups help to cover the entire ear and you'll need to vent your ears occasionally given the closed nature. Now what's really cool are the angled drivers inside that help to channel the audio, something that Sennheiser has been doing for ages. Unfortunately, no velour pads included like we saw on their previous cloud headsets. Uh, for accessories, we only have a two meter splitter cable with a volume uh, control and a mic mute little dongle that has also a shirt clip. It's quite far from the main headset, so I'm not a fan of this uh, implementation. The braided cable is quite thick, which is awesome. So the kinks don't form as easily as on thin braided cables, uh, but any contact with the cable can be heard inside the ear cup, which is inevitable when you move your head. The microphone is so important on a gaming headset, otherwise we'll be all be playing with our favorite pair of headphones and an external microphone. The revolver delivers in this regard, it's very clean, it's not too nasally, it picks up a uh, quite nice voice, it's a little bit boomy. It does compress the background just a little bit, but still it's picking up quite a lot of things, so especially if you be typing on the keyboard, it will be picked up. It will be a little bit muted, but uh, overall I think it's one of the better microphones in this price range, especially when you compare it to something more expensive. So what you're hearing now is the Sennheiser Game 1. It's over $200 for this headset, but uh, microphone quality compared to the Revolver is almost identical. And now let's test it to the ModMic 4.0. And so this is the ModMic 4.0, it's a little bit more open compared to the Revolver, but still very impressed by the vocal quality of the Revolver microphone, especially compared to something more expensive or to this external solution. Now, my preferred sound signature for games includes a wide sound stage so that I feel like I'm in a, you know, a large audio space, a brighter extension because I love my treble and I want to hear the little details. I don't want to miss the little details like very important footsteps, uh, somebody going touching against the wall, and right now the sound engines are picking up on that and giving us all the little cues for directional assistance. And I also love a flat bass response because most of the time the bass um, is muddy and so it kind of ruins the balance. And fortunately, the Revolver in my book has a really good sound signature for a gaming headset. So it does have a brighter extension, so details in the audio are not flat and don't get lost when a lot of things going on, but instead are you know more, very well separated. The bass is a little bit too boomy, which I don't mind, uh, which still gives you that sense of power when things need to be felt. You know, when you're firing a 50 uh, caliber machine gun in squad, which has one of the best weapon sounds ever. And then when smashing through a wall with a hammer in Rainbow Six Siege while a breach charge goes off next to you, it feels amazing. Or just simply blowing it up in Battlefield 4 that also feels very well, nothing is falling apart with the revolver. So the sound signature is fun, exactly how a gaming headset should sound, in my opinion. The bass can be corrected for you know, that extra boominess uh, extension. Um, the headset does leak a little bit audio if you're blasting music, but they isolate very well. 
One of the surprising elements for a closed back design is its semi-open soundstage. It's not too wide, but you know, it's fine. You can definitely hear how far things are coming from. And uh, the stereo imaging with the revolver is really good. Uh, gives you directional cues on what's happening around you. I've actually been accused of wall hacking several times while wearing the headset since I was listening to my environment and anticipating where the enemy would come from. And so the revolver plays nice for competitive too. Really the biggest weakness here lies in the frame and just how much noise it absorbs. Plus the nature of the self-adjusting headband may be a little bit too loose. Uh, for a snug fit. But it's definitely worth of the headset category thanks to a much improved microphone over the original clouds and also nicely tuned drivers for gaming. But is it worth the premium price? I would say no. The only advantage here would be the better microphone and a slightly larger frame in general to accommodate for bigger heads better. But I feel the HyperX Clouds and the Clouds 2 offer better value simply because of the additional accessories and the frame on this headset is just so annoying and how much sound it translates into the ear cups, not just from the frame itself, but also from the cable, something that wasn't totally of an issue on the original headset. So my recommendation uh, still lies with the original HyperX Clouds. I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and we'll see you in the next video.